I live in New Jersey, originally from Israel. Um, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Trajectory. Uh, but more than that, I'm a malignant melanoma stage four cancer patient, currently NED. Been NED as a result of free clinical trials that are participated in that was oh, successful so far, knock on wood. I'm a mother of three, I'm a techie. Um, one sentence about trajectory, what we do, we're basically using artificial intelligence to help and empower us as patients identify different treatment options for them. So that's what we do. Um, and what I wanted actually to talk to you today um, is about uh, COVID-19 or the coronavirus and how does it impact us as cancer patients? Um, and where do we stand in all this mess? Because there is a lot of question mark. There is a lot of changes for us as cancer patients. Um, there is a lot of direct impact that unfortunately is not getting enough attention. And I think it's time for us as a community to actually discuss this, raise our concern, raise our question mark and our voice together um, and, and share some of the thoughts together and see how we can help each other throughout this. So we run a survey among cancer patients and we got a very good response rate of over 70 cancer patients. And we asked a couple of questions, but the two main ones, has your treatment or test been postponed? And unfortunately we see that around 40% of cancer patients treatment has been postponed um, and test. And this number, by the way, is growing daily as more and more uh, facilities and hospitals are closing their doors to cancer patients canceling both regular treatment, the chemotherapy, immunotherapy session uh, around, but also, but also um, scheduled uh, surgeries are being postponed, uh, test scans, both the routine ones and urgent one. Um, and we see that number rising and we see the concern in our communities rising as well, which is something we wanna address. The other thing that we've learned and was shocking and upsetting is that uh, around 50% of the patients don't get any kind of guidance. What does COVID uh, mean for them as cancer patient? Um, how does it impact their cancer treatment? What do they need to do differently as a population? Um, so again, this is something that is concerning because we do and cancer patients do need the special attention at this time. The one thing that is clear, and, and there's, there is a lot of publication around it, and we did consult with a lot of our advisory board oncologists um, and uh, ER uh, um, uh, doctors, and, and you know that coronavirus is something that everyone are learning right now. There isn't a lot of data point. They're trying to collect the data point from China where it started beginning of January um, um, to now. What is clear that obviously is cancer patient, majority of cancer patients are at a higher risk, um, especially those with non-solid tumor, uh, all the blood uh, malignants, the all lymphoma, the leukemia, multiple myeloma, et cetera. Also, Beauty Lazar. Sorry, also those that are right now in active treatment, uh, radiation, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, all those that actually impacted uh, our immune system um, are definitely put us at a higher risk. Um, and those that are in bone, that have gone through the bone marrow transplant, none of this is new because those are exactly the vulnerability that we go through every winter. Um, as for the majority of the patient, even the regular flu can be extremely dangerous and we need to be careful. The, in that sense, it's very similar. The risks are higher though because of the exposure of coronavirus, because there's so many more people right now exposed to coronavirus, are carrying coronavirus, are being diagnosed with coronavirus. The exposure is higher for us, so we have to be extra careful. And all those measurements that are being advised on about the social distancing, the hygiene, uh, we need to apply double just in terms of, ma of taking care of ourselves and maintaining uh, our health. The problem with all of that is how it's impact our routine treatment and our plan treatment. So because of the risk of being infected on the one hand, and because of the higher risk, the, because of the risk of also hospital staff being infected, meaning the institution, the hospitals are so worried on the one hand to get us exposed to coronavirus. They try to keep us away from the hospitals where there, are very, there is more chances of us getting infected on our 
by the fact of mayor leaving the house and using transportation to get to the hospital by being hospital where there are we are exposed to other patients and we are potentially exposed to patients with coronavirus. They're trying to keep us away from the hospital. They're also trying to protect the hospital staff because if we have been infected with the coronavirus, not even knowingly, and we go to our routine treatment or test, uh, we put uh, the hospital uh, staff at the risk of being infected as well. Those are two of the reasons there's been a lot of rescheduling and delays and canceling of the treatment for us as cancer patients. The other thing that the, the hospitals are worried about is keeping bed, uh, ventilators, um, emergency room, surgery rooms available for the surgeon corona patient. So they're dealing with a lot of pressure. And I think you've all seen it in the news all over the world that they're missing ventilators, they're missing bed, they're, they don't have enough capacity to deal with the coronavirus. So they're trying to shut down as many departments that exist in the hospital of the chronic diseases in order to make it available to deal with the surgeon corona patient. So it's a very complex situation. And when I get furious, and I get furious around every 10 to 15 minutes about the fact that I keep seeing patient cancer patient treatment being postponed and they're not getting the care they deserve, I need to remind myself that it's complex, right? They're, they're not getting the care they deserve, not because anyone wanna harm them, but because they're worried about them getting infected, they're worried about the staff, they're worried about capacity of the hospital. But taking all of this into account, there's still a lot of voices that are, that are saying, oncologist voices that are saying, with all of that, we need to keep the cancer patient treatment because this is what's keeping us alive, this is what's keeping them alive. And, Cancer patients, also, regular influenza is, is a problem for them. So we try to minimize, and there's ways to minimize, and we need to deal with it. Canceling treatment is not necessarily the best way to deal with it. But unfortunately, this is the way that the majority of the hospitals are doing it right now. So there is no clear guidance that came from the NCCN, the National Cancer Association, not from ASCO. So all of those federal organization that usually determine um, the course of treatment have not come out yet with clear guidance what's the best way to treat cancer patients uh, during this epidemic. What's the best way to protect our health, to protect the hospital health, but still continue with the routine? Um, which means that every site is making, every hospital is making their own kind of guidelines taking into account what's going on. And that's why we see things changing uh, so dramatically. I can tell you that uh, when we ran the survey and like a week ago, most of the cancellation were in hospitals or facility where there is a specific uh, cancer care unit, but it's part of a general hospital that also take care of every other kind of patient. Over the past week, we got more and more patients from uh, oncology centers like MD Anderson, like uh, Memorial, Sloan Memorial, et cetera. So hospitals that are only taking care of cancer patients are also postponing and canceling treatment. So we see um, there is an escalation in the response of those facilities to the spread of the corona as the coronavirus continues to spread. And they're taking more and more extreme measurements that are impacting us. Um, but it does impact us. And, and we have to fight back because at the end of the day, corona will pass this way or another. Our cancer is not going away that quickly and, and we need to find a way to balance and balance the risk. And it's all about managing risk as it is in life and in business. And, and we need therefore to advocate to ourselves. So even though when we get the call of the hospital letting you know that you know treatment is being postponed, I think you have to ask the oncologist the hard question. It's like, how long can I go without the treatment? We know that sometimes treatment can be postponed. If you get infection, your next chemo or immunotherapy IV will get postponed by three to four weeks. But you need to ask, is it, is it okay to postpone it by four weeks? What, what, if it, what, what about postponing it by eight weeks? How does that increase my risk? How does that increase, how likely is my cancer to spread if my cancer is very aggressive? if it's a metastatic uh, brain cancer or, or a breast tumor that is 
uh, very aggressive and responding very and moving very quickly, then the risk of it spreading a time when I'm not getting my surgery or my treatment is higher than other kind of of cancer that might be moving slower. So you have to have those dialogue with your with your oncologist. And as embarrassing and scary as it is, you need to ask those questions. And if you would like, we're here. We can give you a list of questions to ask and make sure you collect all the, the answers. If tests are being not done, uh, regular testing, again, you push back and you say, can, you, can I get tested at home? Can I talk to my oncologist uh, using telemedicine? Uh, can he does, do a video call with me? There are measurement digital or, and others that can be implemented. So they have their way of working, but in times of crisis, we need to challenge them to maybe operate differently. Maybe I can go to a smaller site where there is less people, maybe could be dedicated hours, the same way supermarkets today are doing um, early hours for the senior, the, uh, the elderly that are, that are at risk and us that are at risk. Maybe we can do the same with the lab works. So there'll be times that we can go to the labs and get our test uh, and get our test. You can push back also on treatment. Some of the treatment can be done via pills and not IV. It's a change. Uh, it could be a change of drugs, but it might be better than not receiving anything right now because no one has any answer. And if, you know, every, if anyone could have come up and say, we're postponing all treatment, it's two weeks, and then we'll go back to routine. It's one story, but that's currently not the case. And we all understand it. It could be four, it could be eight, it could be longer. And therefore we need to understand what's the alternative uh, other than not getting any treatment. Unfortunately, also a lot of trials has been postponed. They're not only not opening new trials for the new drugs that could help save futures life, but they're also not getting, not accepting patients to current trials. And even patients in current trials, they're stopping their treatment. So all of it is impacting everyone. Um, if there is risk, maybe, and the risk is commuting, maybe we're in a trial in one state and we live in another, it's worth exploring the option with the hospital. There's a lot of apartments that belongs to the hospital or next to the hospital. Airbnb can provide free lodging right now and keep us closer to the hospital and prevent the commuting and the travel ban and then still getting uh, treatment um, because some of the hospitals said we're not going to, you're not going to be able to get the treatment because you have to travel and there is a travel ban. So again, thinking a little bit outside of the box and challenging that way of thinking and coming with creative solution. And in terms of the trials, we can look for trials. We can look even the ones that are not recruiting. We're putting patients on list right now. So as soon as they go back to recruiting, we can get everybody sign up again and, and get things running. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that there's gotta be a dialogue here and we cannot just accept it for what it is. We, can, we understand that the situation is complex. It's complex on our hospitals and our oncologists, but it's, they need to understand that it's, jeopardizing us and our health more than anything. Um, so we have to have this dialogue and we have to ask the harsh question, knowing that they don't necessarily have answer, but maybe if we will push for answer, they'll come up with a different way. The situation is definitely more there than we would like to think. And like we said, it's not temporary. Um, so they cannot make those decisions without us. They cannot take those decisions without us raising our voice to the danger that some of those decisions are putting us uh, in. Um, and, you, and you see that there are voices in the industry that are starting to push back. Colombia is a, is a place where they held up all treatment, all surgeries, all trials. Um, but we do start to see oncologists raising their voice and saying, that they have and they should respect the commitment they have to us to give us our protocols and to give us our treatment um, and we need to work with them so patient that their treatment can take uh, that they can suffer from a postponed that they will they, they, they is not as aggressive it does not move quicker then definitely slow it down and wait a little bit to not to expose them but those that cannot take this time does not have this time to stand still have to be on top of it. And I think that's what we also in trajectory are now trying to do. We're trying to raise this voice. We're trying to tell this story. We, we, we are reaching out to hospitals and facilities and advocating on behalf of our community. Um, 
We also launched a, a portal where you can continuously get updates on where things are changing. Some of the industry thought leaders and its guideline will change as well, updating on the guidelines. But if there's one thing I'm asking you is raise your voice and let's work as a community here. Otherwise we are being put on the side in the corner and I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried uh, what will happen in four, in eight weeks uh, to the majority of us. So that's one, um, one side of it. The other side of it is obviously the stress. So the entire planet is right now stressing and, and being uh, at home worried about the situation. It's not a fun situation, but I think everybody knows that for us, stress is our greatest enemy. Um, and we need to do everything we can to fight it. So whatever helps us go through it. And I think as cancer patients, we're actually used to fighting both uncertainty and stress. Um, so we now have a new type of stress, but we should continue practicing whatever method that work for you from daily meditation, which is something that I started doing when I wasn't going through treatment. And I find it very helpful for those who go for, for spiritual guidance, there is a lot of online therapy that is accessible today. Talkspace is a one uh, big one, and they're now giving a hundred dollar discount um, and to patient uh, to get access. And you can talk to certified therapists online without leaving your home. If anyone needs also, if anyone would like to do online therapy but have some uh, financial challenges and need our help, we can help uh, get coupons. So we're here to help, but don't give up on getting the help you need to cope with the situation. The other thing that I think is important is social distancing is not necessarily social isolation. So definitely we talked about the risk for cancer patient. We, we need to stay away um, from everyone, but uh, digitally, we can still talk to everybody. So just try to keep it safe so no one will hijack your Zoom like happened to us at the beginning of the session today. Um, but FaceTime, Skype, Zoom, there's so many platforms that allows you to do video conferencing and, and so you will not feel alone. Um, if you go to therapy these days for those places that have not shut down and still let you do therapy, but they don't let you come with anyone to therapy, uh, use you, you should still have a virtual body. It can be any one of your friends or, or family member, or if you like, we're here as well. So in trajectory, we opened the calendar, let us know when your therapy takes place and we will be there virtually with, with you holding your hand, virtually putting a, covering you with a hot blanket and giving you something to drink and making you laugh and sharing stories about, uh, you know, how we overcome the side effects and how we are gonna overcome this period as well. So. We're, we are willing to be your virtual body if you need it. Don't go through uh, the treatment by yourself. If you're lucky enough and, and treatment still continue for you, let us be there for you and, and do it together. And I don't know if you noticed, but there's so many online communities and activities that are now open, free of charge. Yoga classes, language learning, art projects, so many. Use that, leverage that um, to keep yourself A, busy, and be part of society and not feel like you're completely isolated. I think it's, it's a quote that I like by Vince Lombardi. It's time for all of us to stand and cheer for the doer, the achiever. So it's time for us to be the doer and it's hard, but we need to advocate. We need to advocate for ourselves. We need to fight. Um, we cannot take it without fighting. We cannot sit on the side and let them decide whether we get the treatment or not. We need to be part of this dialogue and make the decision together. Recognize there is a challenge, like we said, and recognize it's not a simple situation, but let's do something about it. Sitting on the sideline is not an option right now, or it's an option, but the price we might pay later on will be too high. So I, I really urge us all not to sit on the, not to stand on the line on the side, but advocate to our, for ourselves and do what we can in order to continue fighting it. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to share, but uh, I want to open it to discussion and I want to hear what your experience been so far, uh, what other thought you had that we can all leverage and learn from, any additional concern you want to raise, anything you think that we can do in order to help 
ourselves as a community together throughout these days. Feel free to unmute yourself and, and let me know. <laughs> Tria. Yes. Hey, Al. I just want to tell you that you're amazing. Thank you so much for everything, for whatever you're doing. How do you do with this um, environment today uh, that everything is so hard to develop and push forward? So I'm very impressed with your um, perseverance, like always. Yeah. We need more of you. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's what you, that's what you, you know, the cliches when life gives you lemon, make a lemonade out of it. <laughs> but, uh, yes. But that's the perseverance is as, as part of that journey of fighting cancer. You learn you can fight much more. And, and what we're doing now is trying to do this activities for the community and, and share uh, with the community the data, the information. We will also, like I said, we, we, we will post on our website soon some guidelines from oncologists on what to do from ER doctors when cancer patients should participate or not. And we're trying to also raise awareness around the media to the situation of the cancer patient during this time. So exactly what we discussed. Unfortunately, with all the focus on COVID-19, they're, they're, forgetting, they're forgetting the impact it has on communities of patients like ours. And, and we need to continue raising this voice in order for those decision-making to understand the price and change, think about what's the right policy and find ways. Um, Absolutely. And, and do not take no as an answer as you are teaching us. So I'm um, taking it as a note. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else on the call would like to raise, share, concern, something he's been experiencing, anything we can help with? If not, then I'll, because we started late as uh, we had the, the prank kicking, taking over our Zoom, I'll let you all off. I'll, I'll share with everyone the, par, the PDF that we just shared. It will have the link also to um, the website that we will continuously send updates. And again, if there's anything we can do, even just brainstorm together before you talk to your oncologist. So after you got a call from your oncologist responding or delaying something and you want to think through it, you want to, you want to think what to ask, what to say, what's the alternative, talk to us. We're here and we work together as a community to take us to go, you know, sail through this period. I don't know if sailing through is the right description uh, to what we're going through, but we'll survive that. Yeah. <laughs> we survive cancer, we can definitely survive uh, COVID.